The cutting room floor of gaming development gives a look into what may have been possible in an alternate reality where the applicable content was cut due to time or budget constraints, or just staring into a whole other direction. So what I'm going to do today is unearth some gems and forgotten concepts from the development of the legendary games Gears of War 1 and Gears of War 2. As always, I'm your host Stabs, and without further ado, let's get into this. The Buckethead. Do you remember the one-manned COG military exosuit called the Silverback, equipped with a heavy rocket launcher and a stripped-down version of the Mulcher machine gun? Well, the precursor to the Silverback was a concept known as the Buckethead. The Buckethead was a two-legged transport machine, transporting a single operator who would navigate and control the walker. Its head was round-shaped and bore the COG insignia on its chest. The Buckethead was an offensive and defensive mechanism, and so it was equipped with a powerful, large-caliber machine gun-style weapon on its right side. I really do like the design of the Buckethead and how it has the COG symbol on its chest. They could always repurpose this concept as a precursor to the Silverback in the Pendulum Wars. With limited technological features, I think that would be awesome. Female Dom Originally, players were going to be granted the ability to choose the gender of Dom before playing the game. The female Dom's name would have been Dominique, but this whole idea was scrapped, because it would have taken way too much time and resources. Just think about it, they would have had to create two separate scripts, hire another voice actor, record more voice lines for every single character, and so on. Therefore, that idea was scrapped. Baird and Cole's switched roles. So originally, Baird and Cole were going to have each other's roles, so Cole was going to be the sarcastic asshole. Meanwhile, Baird was going to be the larger than life, former Thrashball star. Of course, it didn't end up going this way, and I'm glad that it didn't. Baird and Cole are such awesome characters, and they are a great duo of contrasting styles. And the Cole train is one of my favourite characters in the entire franchise, so I'm glad his character wasn't changed. Marcus and Anthony Carmine's original voices. In the first ever Gears of War trailer, Marcus, Dom, and Anthony Carmine were seen sitting and talking. Marcus's previous voice actor was Steve Bloom. Meanwhile, it's unknown who previously voiced Anthony before it was changed. Are you afraid? Of the dark. That fairy tale stuff always scares the crap out of me. Most urban legends are based on fact. Tell me about it. The Locust Dragon. In 2004, there was an E3 tech demo presentation where Epic Games presented Unreal Engine 3. So here we saw some early Gears of War prototypes, and one of the Gears assets shown to display the technology was this strange creature that appears to be a locust dragon of some sort. Here they were trying to explain character detail of the engine. Now this creature was before the locust had their name and story, but this dragon has the locust look all over it, with its helmet, skin and so on looking very similar to the hollow creatures seen throughout the Gears universe. We know this was originally a locust creature, because right after it, they show a brumac. So this is really cool in terms of what could have been. A locust dragon? Imagine that. All hell would break loose. You'd be seeing Cog Gears being scorched alive. It probably would have suited the Gears universe, but it's crazy to think about. Unreal Warfare the Gears of War that we know and love wasn't always going to be a campaign-focused third-person shooter. In fact, Epic Games had originally envisioned the game as a class-based multiplayer shooter called Unreal Warfare, and it was also a vehicle-based shooter at one point. According to Unreal Engine lead programmer James Golding, Unreal Warfare became Gears of War only after several years of continuous development. The game initially focused on the class-based multiplayer experience, but with a sci-fi theme. However, after completing work on Unreal Tournament 2003 and 2004, Epic realised that the industry had entirely changed. Epic found that the single player campaign had become a major selling point for not just shooters, but all games. It took time for the concept and name of Gears of War to be created, and thankfully they went with this direction. Gears of War Forever. The Locust's previous name. The Locust Horde's name was originally going to be called The Geist, but during this time, Nintendo GameCube introduced a game called Geist. 
and therefore Epic Games had to go back to the drawing board and think of a different name. Queen Mira was originally called the Geist Ore Mother, the Locust Reavers were originally called Geist Reapers, and even the Wretches had a previous design. I'm not sure what they were originally called, but they looked a lot more humanoid. They were also seen in the E3 2004 tech demo. I feel like the Coalition may have taken this idea for the Juvies as part of the Swarm, because the Juvies really do appear to be very similar to the previous version of the Wretch. But anyway, I'm glad that they didn't go with the Geist, because the Locust is a way better name. Troika Gunner Multiplayer Character In an earlier build of Gears of War 1, the Locust Sniper drone in multiplayer was called the Troika Gunner. This was interesting, and especially because the Troika Gunner all these years later has never been a playable character in multiplayer, which really is a shame. The Troika Gunner is a Locust drone, who is seen to man the Troika Heavy Machine Gun, hence where it gets its name, and it has a specialised helmet. If anyone working at the Coalition is watching this video, then please, let's give our boy the Troika Gunner the credit he deserves and grant him a skin in Gear 6. That would be pretty sweet. Early COG Gear Designs As Epic Games were originally creating the look of the COG Soldiers, they went through over a month of concept iterations. From SWAT style soldiers to futuristic samurai, they always wanted something that was new and distinct. The goal was to make the protagonists as cool as the enemies, but they worked on some designs to get through to the final look. Which I believe is also why the gears ended up being so buff and huge, to make them look cool like the Locust. In the end, I will say that they very much succeeded in doing this. The cog armour is so amazing and unique, and the protagonist and gears in Gears of War have been so well designed over the years. In so many different military style games, the soldiers designs are pretty bland and common looking, but with Gears, the designs have always been distinct. Literally one of the best soldier designs ever in science fiction. Early Berserker Cutscene In the Gears of War 1 behind the scenes documentary, I saw a brief cutscene where a Berserker randomly charges through a wall mid-fight. Early Chainsaw Battle Prototype In more of the earlier prototype footage, we saw a chainsaw duel, probably unfinished, but looked slightly different as the chainsaw battle also involved getting a few punches in, which is pretty cool. Obviously the iconic chainsaw duel is dope, and I would never change that, but it's nice to see the prototype version and what could have potentially been. Cole and Baird's Helmets In one of the beta trailers, we see the scene where the Junker stops, and you have to make it through the rain to the Lithia Emulsion facility. Cole and Baird are there as well, but they're actually wearing helmets. I'd assume that this may have been because their character designs were still unfinished, and therefore the helmets were only placeholders, but honestly I'm not sure, it's a really interesting one. Also, Cole's character wasn't as physically big originally, but once they hired voice actor Lester Spate, who really brought life into the Augustus Cole character, they wanted to give Cole some actual guns for arms, so they tripled the size of his arms, turning Coltrane into an absolute beast. Now with Gears of War 2, I actually couldn't find a lot of cut concepts and ideas. I looked everywhere, but I did find a few, so here we go. The Construction Boomer A concept that never made it into Gears 2 was the idea of having a Construction Boomer in the Hollow. Similar to how the Butchers were practically non-combatants, as their role was to chop up rockworms and feed them to the Locust Horde. The Construction Boomer would have been armed with a large wrench, and would have probably been seen working in the hollow, until being drawn into the fight. I kinda wish they went along with this, as it would have added a bit more depth to the local society in terms of non-military aspects. I would have loved to see the construction boomer, although I think this enemy type would have practically played the same as a butcher. The Krill Breeding Grounds The Krill were originally planned to be part of Gears 2, where their breeding grounds would have been seen in the hollow, and perhaps different species of the Krill would have been encountered. However, this idea was scrapped, and it was instead written in a collectible that the Krill breeding grounds and the Krill as a whole were made extinct by the detonation of the light mass bomb, allowing humans to finally roam free in the city without the fear of being eaten alive. Hoffman Speech In Gears 2, Chairman Prescott had his iconic speech, and the developers did this to convey to the players what kind of war and what kind of world this is, a backstory of the planet that knew nothing but war, and to convey the significance 
of Operation Hollow Storm. However, originally, it was planned for Hoffman to do the speech, but that didn't quite work out. Hence the character Chairman Prescott was created, and this was also done to convey more of the leadership structure of the coalition of ordered governments. The Palace Guard Sword Found in the Unreal Editor was the Palace Guard Sword, signature weapons for the highest ranking Theron Guards. The Palace Guards were the defenders of the Royal Palace and Queen Mira. This was the highest honour a drone could have, and therefore, the Palace Guard were made up of the most decorated and accomplished drones of the Locust Army. The Palace Guards are one of the most badass enemies in the whole Gears of War franchise. Adding a signature sword to their arsenal would have been insane, and I think this was a missed opportunity for sure. It's a real shame that the Palace Guard sword never appeared. And that, my friends, is all the cut content and ideas I could find from Gears of War 1 and 2. This was a really interesting video, so I hope you enjoyed. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, if you want to see more content from me. And a special thank you as always, to the ever-growing YouTube and Patreon members, who also help me and the running of this channel. I really do appreciate all of you. I'm your host Abs, and as always, I will catch you guys next time.